the nice story. I mean, I know we talked about it last week. I know it's not on your list, but I, I think it's a... I, I loved uh, Queen Camilla's present to King Charles for their anniversary. I don't know if you saw what it was, but it, it was the money with his face on it. Saying, oh, here you go. Look, here, here are the banknotes with your face. That's a good anniversary present, isn't it? I think that they both just... Um, I mean, they constantly prove why... And I am a huge Diana fan, but that they are the... They are a great love story and they are truly meant to be with each other and they share a sense of humor, which is something that Diana had an incredible sense of humor. And in uh, there's an entire wall in Vegas at um, this museum for Diana where they have obtained these greeting cards that she sent people and the greeting cards are hilarious. And both of her sons have talked about receiving these inappropriate cards at school. But it's definitely not the king's sense of humor. Um, I think that the king and, and Queen Camilla have a very a unique sense of humor. That they, And it's it's almost like a, a secret language that they share with one another. And, um, you know, I do think that ultimately they were meant to be together. And you see that in the way that they engage with each other sort of awkwardly. You've been to that Diana Museum, haven't you? Oh, yeah. I almost wore a shirt from it tonight. I don't, I just... <laughs> I didn't though. Of course, you've been to that Diana Museum. I, don't, I would I, I would be have been horrified had you told me you'd not been. I just I don't know what you were just saying though. I just sort of flashed into my mind. I wonder if Diana was still alive today, and I don't know. Maybe she'd have remarried. I wonder if if the four of them would have ever found some peace enough to have been able to to I don't know share King Charles's birthday or or. Or, you know, to have been able to go to family events and, and it all been OK. Well, I know that uh, I truly believe that towards the end of her life, she had become closer to Ch Prince Charles at the time. Um, they I've told this story to you before, but I, I have it in my book, Ours for Revenge Dress when he asks if he could stop by Kensington Palace to use the loo. And as he he stops into Kensington Palace, uses the restroom, and as he's leaving, Diana chased him out and said in front of all of his guards and everyone they're waiting for him, same time next week, and winked at him. And he, you know, blushed, but everybody knew that, that she was joking. But I think that they had a really, um, a much stronger relationship towards the end of her life. I don't know about about Camilla though because those two truly did work behind the scenes to pit the press against each other and I imagine that that's hard to um reconcile from yeah and it would have been look had at Diana... Prince Harry and Prince William I mean yeah. look, look at that but yeah and actually you're right had Diana lived it would have been Diana versus Camilla in the press constantly you know if, if diana was out one day and camilla was you would have had those you know the, the, those pieces in the press who wore it better all of those um sorts of things well we're seeing it here in the uk you know the press love two women that are the sort of you know rivalries uh with each other so maybe that would have been um the case but uh, i i think you're right i think that they were friends towards the end um uh, the scene as well by Prince Charles is, is the then Prince Charles's reaction to her, her death. He was absolutely, completely bereft at her death. He really, really was. And I don't think that that was stage managed. That was absolutely genuine. Hey, talking of stage managed, uh, let's talk about the polo in Miami yesterday. Now, uh, I, I mentioned yesterday how absolutely lovely it was to see Meghan and Harry share a kiss at the polo that uh, Harry was playing in. It was it was a lovely, lovely moment. And oh, it just so happened to be caught by their Netflix film crew. Yeah, I thought I honestly I'm going to get killed for this, but I thought that Meghan looked absolutely beautiful. Um, but in addition to her midriff, her controlling nature was on clear display you know she was requesting other individuals to pose next to her instead of prince harry uh the uh, like you said the highly choreographed kiss picture and you know it's all for netflix it's all for show they were at the royal salute polo challenge at the grand champions polo club in wellington and um to me this announcement of these two brand new shows 
it's it has solidified to me that there's no chance for a reconciliation between Prince Harry and Prince William anytime soon because again now Prince William has to worry about microphones and cameras following his brother around and both the Prince and Princess of Wales have been so fiercely uh, private and worried about protecting their children from the outside world as of late there's no way they're going to jeopardize that I think you're right by the way I think that they both looked amazing yesterday when when I don't know whether it was when they arrived or when they were leaving but also uh Prince Harry in his his, his white chinos and and his, his linen jacket and they I just think that they looked amazing and fair play to Megan for wearing six inch stilettos on grass I mean, I <laughs> that is that is a commitment to a new chew which we know she loves um but you're quite right all stage managed for Netflix. It's interesting, actually, I was speaking this week um, on the Royal Tea, which is on on um, Talk TV and it's on uh, YouTube. And, and, and I was being asked about the chance of a reconciliation. And what you've just said is absolutely right. And I'll repeat what I said then. Um, how could you possibly sit down William and Harry, Prince William and Prince Harry and, and, and try and mediate some sort of reconciliation without Prince Harry signing a non-disclosure agreement. How could you possibly do that? Because you're right, even when they had that meeting after Prince Philip's funeral, it ended up one of the extra chapters in spare. When they try and reconcile, that's what ends up. And, and, and the issue is that any move to reconcile will end up being material for some sort of book, interview or professional victimhood. Well, flashback to the fly on the wall scene where Meghan finds out Prince William's head of communications is weighing in on one of her many lawsuits. She was appalled. She, you know, gasps. She, I mean, it's such a raw moment for Meghan Markle where her guard is down. We rarely see these kind of moments for her, but she is so angry and she is so mad. And she's saying to Harry, basically, I can't believe your brother would do that. Flashback to Prince Harry sheepishly showing Meghan Markle a text message from Prince William after the Oprah Winfrey interview. Prince William is not going to invite that type of chaos back into his life right now. No, because Prince William is uh, in love and loathe, or loathe Prince William. He's about control, very much about control. He's very, very protective, as you've just alluded to. He is not going to allow that back into his life. Uh, funny how you say one of the many lawsuits. I mean, they, they've literally got more lawsuits than, than Meghan's got dresses, right? I don't know. I bet she's got a lot of dresses. Oh, um, I, I wonder. <laughs> that would be interesting to see which is uh, the one. Now, uh, we've got these two new Netflix shows. Uh, as we say, one is about the polo. Now, the other one is about... I mean, it's about, like, cookery and lifestyle and entertaining yeah. and i can't help but read that and just think you just want to sell us pet food by american dead riviera don't you yeah it's because it, they say she's going to be celebrating megan's going to be celebrating the joys of cooking gardening entertaining and friendship i think judging by the content of both projects this is not about fast cash which is what we usually talk about i think based on those descriptions they are clearly desperate to change people's perspectives, um, perception of them. Uh, I could name 10 friends Meghan Markle no longer talks to, but she's eager to brand herself as everyone's gardening girlfriend. Uh, Harry and Meghan are trying to use these projects, I think, as PR tools that will likely blow up in their faces because there are receipts. They claim a lot of things that turn out not to be true. The more they put out there, the more people fact check them. I mean, do you really think that Meghan's going to be out there sort of growing carrots and uh, all of those sorts of things and, and nurturing the garden. It's going to literally be, oh, look, you know, here are some carrots and look at this, this look at all this, all, all of this fruit. No, oh, I've made some jam and, oh, here it is. And it's just $7 if you just, you know, it, it's going to be a QVC show, isn't it? I mean, she got Selena Gomez's, um, one of her production people to do it so i i knew i felt like that was the direction they were going to go i think it's going to be megan and a celebrity or, or a megan and a celebrity chef in the kitchen just like selena gomez's uh, show on hbo which is really cute um and you're seeing her go uh, uh, it's very i know we always throw around martha stewart gwyneth paltrow but um some of these uh, these other names but 
Selena Gomez has a makeup line. They say Megan's going to launch a makeup line. Selena Gomez has a cooking show, like a lot of the, a blog. A lot of the things I'm seeing also um, goes hand in hand with what Selena Gomez has done too, surprisingly. I think she's going, you know, she is, she's trying to just become a personality, but um, they try so hard to control their image. And sometimes it reeks of insincerity. Uh, they lack the authenticity needed to maintain the star power that they once did have. Well, absolutely. And I think it's as we predicted, you and I predicted, um, and we did many podcasts, you and I, and I keep saying, and people keep saying we need to do another one, and we've been absolutely dreadful at it. But we, we keep saying, you know, we went, uh, we came up with a, a laundry list of, of some of the, the, the tap that they were going to end up selling us and the branded stuff and sort of Megan makeup. And my favourite one, of course, was Archie wipes, you know, m makeup wipes that they could bring off. But actually, it's it's becoming true. I mean, this is actually true. One of the things they want to hoik us is pet food. I mean, they're actually going to be selling dog, you know, food for Fido. I think it was shampoo and conditioner. For dog dogs? Shampoo and conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, few. All right, so it's not going to be it's not going to be pet food. It'll be shampoo and conditioner for your dog. I mean, and and who said that they were ever devaluing the royal brand? Whoever no. said that? Well, you know, I think that if there are people out there willing to buy it, God bless them. But, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was interesting timing the way that we heard about the new Netflix shows uh, as if once Prince William broke his silence on social media and once we saw Prince George and Prince William out and about, um, you know, looking like they were in good spirits, then this the onslaught of the Sussex PR, you know, comes our way with the deadline article and fun i also want to mention christo that if you tried to share the deadline article um via their website it did not say anything about prince harry in the title it said megan markle to launch to duchess of sussex <laughs> megan duchess of sussex to launch two new shows if you look at their facebook post when the article was originally published it says megan markle duchess of sussex to release uh, two new netflix shows harry is an afterthought this is all a pr push for megan markle where where is harry who is harry harry who that will be what it, what it is harry houdini that's who um now is this part of their pr blitz as you say because they've got a new pr team now i mean i say new um most of their staff remain in the new stage because they end up leaving before they've been in the role for very long but they've got this new pr team and and, and this is all part of their blitz isn't it well, I think that what we saw when it came to the polo event is Harry and Meghan wanting to release that they had these two new shows come out before somebody at the polo event said why, you know, told The Sun that Netflix cameras were following them everywhere. And, you know, Deadline is one of the um, one of the publications that they typically do work with when they want to announce something. Deadline, People Magazine, Variety, the ones that cater to them and have a positive tone uh, typically get the excuse exclusives and so um it, it's not really a new strategy certainly we've seen similar you know p content pumped out through deadline before but i think that we heard about it aside from them give you know it feeling like it was okay after kate's cancer diagnosis to continue to promote themselves uh, seeing prince william out and about i think that also they wanted to make sure that no one else could announce these this show about polo before they did polo and Gardening. I mean, Gardening. good lord, honestly. Um, Polo and pot. Polo <laughs> and pot. Okay, we've got one minute to talk about another King Charles story about uh, appointing this colleague, but apparently being duped. What's this story? So, um, Garter King of Arms, David White, has been accused, this is in the Daily Mail today, this is an exclusive, of ignoring long-established court procedure and instead using a back channel to secure the King's signature on his preferred choice for a senior appointment of his department um, at the College of Arms. This happened and this is, I think, why people are so up in arms about it. Specifically, this happened when the king was in London for his ongoing cancer treatment. And this is when staff, they were specifically told to not bother him during this. This When he was going through the cancer treatment yeah. in London, he's really just supposed to be there to go through cancer treatment in London. Um, and so that's why a lot of people, I mean, aside from breaking the rules, people feel like uh, it was kind of... Um, 
morally Wrong. corrupt. Yeah, well, you know? heads, if, if I was going to say heads will roll. In years ago, heads would have actually literally rolled um, for that. Listen, Kinsey, we've got to leave it. Thank you so much for holding on uh, for us and uh, doing a slightly shorter one today. That's Kinsey Schofield.